Hi everyone. Today I'm going to read you a book. And this book is called The Witch Light. The book is by Susan Fletcher. I had an unexpected request the other day. There had been two bad landslide where the bulldozers have been working on the slate banks. Someone said it was because workmen had been disturbing the grave of Korak. Korak was a famous Glencoe witch. One point of interest about her is that, in spite of reputed badness, she was to have been buried on the burial island of Eileen Munda. It was often noticed that however stormy the sea or wild the weather, it habitually calmed down to allow the boat out for a burial. In the case of Korak, the storm did not cease, till finally she was buried beside where the road now runs. By the way, in the highlands, islands were used for burials very widely. Remember wolves remained here very much later than in the south. This was written by Barbara Fairweather in 1979 and she was from the Clan Donald. More things are learned in the woods than in books. Animals, trees and rocks teach you things not to be heard elsewhere. And that was written by St. Bernard, who lived 1090 to 1153. Jane. Edinburgh, 18th February 1692. I can't think of a winter that has been this cruel or has asked so much of me. For weeks now, it has been blizzards and ice. The wind is hard, northern one. It finds its way inside my room and troubles this candle that I'm writing by. Twice it has gone out, for the candle's sake. I must keep this brief. I have news as foul as the weather. Edinburgh shivers and coughs, but it whispers too. In its winds and markets there are whispers of treachery, of a mauling in the brutish highland parts. Deaths are often violent there, but I hear these were despicable ones. A clan, they say, has been slaughtered. Their guests rose up against them and killed them in their beds. On its own, this is abhorrent, but there is more. Jane, they say, it was soldier's work. Of all people, you know my mind, you know my heart, and if this is true, if it was soldier's hands that did this bloodiness, then surely it was the king who ordered it. Why will say the orange, pretending one, for he is not my king? I must leave for this valley. They call it wild and remote, and it's surely snowbound at this time. But it's my duty. I must learn what I can report it, my love. For if William is behind this wickedness, it may prove his undoing and our making. All I wish, as you know, is to restore the true king to his throne. Pray for my task. Ask the Lord for its safe and proper outcome. Pray for the lives of all our brothers in this cause, for we risk so much in its name. Pray, too, for better weather. This snow gives me a cough, the candle goddess. I must end this letter, or I shall soon be writing by the fire's light, which is not enough light for my eyes, and God's love, and my own, Charles. Chapter 1 The moon is lady of this, of Privet. The complete herbal called Peeper, 1653. When they come for me, I will think of the end of the northern ridge, for that's where I was happier, with the skies and wind and the mountains behind dark with moss or dark with a shadow of a cloud moving across them, 
I will think of how it is when part of mountains brighten my s very suddenly. So it is like that rock is chosen by the sun, marked out by sunshine from all the other rocks. It will shine and then grow dark again, and I will stand with my skirts blowing, make my way home. I will have that sun like rock in me. I will keep itself. Or I think of how I ran with the snow coming down. There was no moon, but I saw the morning star, which they say is a devil star, but it is love star too. It shone that night so brightly, and I ran beneath it, thinking, let all be well, let all be well. Then I saw the land below, which was so peaceful, so white and still and sleeping, that I thought maybe the star had heard, and all was well. No death was coming near. It was a night of beauty. Then, for a while it was the greatest beauty I had ever seen in all of my life. My little life. Or oh, I will think of you. In my last quiet moments I will think of him besides me. How very softly he said you. Some called in a dark place. Like there was no goodness to be found inside those hills. But I know there was goodness. I climbed into the snowy heights. I crouched by the loch and drank from it. So my hair was in the water and I lifted up my head to see the mist come down. On a clear frosty night, when they said all the wolves were gone, I heard a wolf call from Bidden, Nambian. It was such a long mournful call that I closed my eyes to hear it. It mourned in its own end, I think, our, or ours, as if it knew. Those nights were like no other nights. The hills were very black, like they were shaped out of the cloth, and the cloth was dark blue, starry sky. I knew stars, but not as those stars were. Those were its nights, and its days were clouds and rocks. Its days were passing grass and pulling herbs from sucky places that stained my hands and left their patty smell on me. I was damp, peat smelling. Deer trot their eyes. I also trot them, or nestled in their hollows, and felt their old dear warmth. I saw what their black dear eyes had seen before my own. Those were its days, small things. Like how a river parts around the rocks and joins again. It was not dark, no. I had to find it, darkness. I had to push rocks from their resting place or look for it in caves. The summer nights could be so light, so full of light that I curled up like a mouse. Hid my eyes beneath my hands so I might find a little dark to sleep inside. It is how I sleep, even now, tucked up. I will think this way. When my life is ending, I will not think of musket shots or how it smelled by Aknacon. Not of blotted things. I will think of the end of the Northern Ridge. How my hair blew all about me. How I saw the glen go light and dark with clouds. Or how he said, you've changed me, as he stood by my side. I thought, this is a place, as I stood here. I thought, this is my place, mine, where I was meant for. It was waiting for me, and I found it, in the end. I was always for places. I was made for the places where people did not go, like forests, or the soft marshy ground where feet sank down and to walk there made a suck suck sound. Me as a child was often in my box. I watched frogs or listened to how rushes were in the breezes and I liked that, how they sounded, which is how I knew what I was. See, Cora sat smiling. She was for places too. She trawled her skirts over mud and wet sand. She was brambled and fruit stained and once she lived in an old water wheel upon its soft green wood. She said she was lonesome there. But what voice, uh, what choice did I have? Tell me. Not much. Some people cannot have a people life. We try for it. We go to markets and say hello. We help to bring the hay in and pick the cider apples from their bee-noisy trees. 
but it takes very little, a hair or a strange moon, for a hack to come. Whore. They raise an eyebrow then. They call for ropes to bind us, so that we grow so sad and afraid for our small lives that we turn to empty places. And that makes them so hack even more. She lives on her own, walks in shadows, I hear. But where else is safe? No towns are. All that was left for Cora was higher paths, or sunken ones. Places of such wind that trees were bent over and had no leaves. Normal folk did not go there, so we did. Her and I. I lived in caves and woods. My feet have been torn up on thorns. When I crept into towns for eggs and milk, they crossed themselves, spat. I know spitting. I know it's sour too. Like retching, like a cat pulling up the bones of a bird in the aid of a hole, all sharp parts and with feathers. They hissed. We know what you are. And did they? They thought they did. In my English life, they took all truth. My snowy birth, how I like marshy places and pressed them into proper lies. Like how they saw me lift a shoulder up and turn into a crow. I never did that. I have lived on open land, on moors and windy weather. I lived in a hut I made myself with my own hands of moss and branches and stone. The mountains looked down on me as I curled up at night. And now, now I live here, in a cell with chains. It snows. From the little window I can see it snows. It's been months, I think, of snowing, of bluish eyes and cold. Months of clouded breath. I blow and see my breast roll out and I think, look, that's my life. I'm still living. I like it. Snow. I always did. I was born in a sharp, hard earth December. The church folk sung about three wise men and the stars through their chattering teeth. Cora said that the weather you are born in is yours, all your life, your own weather. You will shine brightest in a snowstorm, she told me. Oh yes, I believed her. For she was born in a sunder, and was always stormy-eyed. So snow and cold is mine, and I have known some winters. I've heard fish not beneath their eyes. I've seen a trap door freeze so it could not go and bang. So they still took the man's life away in the end. Once in these high Scottish passes I made a hole in a drifts with my own hand and crept inside so soldiers ran past not knowing I crouched in. This saved my life, I think. I'm a hardy thing. People die from the cold, but I haven't. I've not had blue skin, not once. A man said it was the evil fire in me that kept me warm. And bind that harlot up. But there was no evil fire. I was just born in snowy weather and had to be hardy to stay alive. I wanted to live in this life, so I grew strong and did. Winter is an empty season too. Safer. For who wanders out on frosty nights? Or drifty white mornings. Not many. And none by choice. In my travelling days, with my grey mare and north and west in my head, I might see no one for days. Just us, galloping. Me and the mare, with snowflakes in our manes. And when we did see people, it was mostly desperate ones. Gypsies. Clawing for knots of broken men. Drunks. A thief for two and foxes. Running from the hunter's gun was that look in their eyes, that wild, dread look, which I know. Once I found some people kneeling in a gloomy Scottish wood, they took Christ's body into their mouths, and a priest was there saying church things. I watched and thought, why there? And at night? I did not understand. I have never understood. I never understood much on God or politics. But I know these kneeling folk were covenanters, which is a gunpowder word. They could be killed for praying, which is why they did in the woods at night. And I passed a lone girl once, 
She was my age or less. We met in some lowland trees in the early hours and we slowed brushed hands. We looked on each other for a moment or two with be careful in our eyes, be safe and wise. For who else is as hated as we are? Who is more lonesome than once called witch? Briefly, we both had a friend, but we were hunted creatures. Her, the fox, and I. So I took the pass she had come by, and she took my old pass. Witch. Like a shadow, it is never far. There are other names too. Hag and whore. Wicked beast. Harlot is common also, and such names are too cruel to tie upon a dog. But they've been tied easily on me. I drag them, wild matter ones, like I was a fluid hawked up in the street. Like I was not even human. I cried after that, in the market once. Cora was devil's hole. But which? The oldest name, the worst. I know it's sick, mud weight. I know the mouse shape when it says it. I reckon it's the most hated word of all. More hated than Highlands or Papist is. Some ones say, William, like it's poison. I know many people don't want him to be king, but he is king for now, and I was always witch. That December birth of mine was troubled one. My mother bled too much and cursed, and she roared so long that her throat split in two. Like a can in painful times, her roar had two voices, on hers and one the devil's, or so said the folk who heard it from the church. I fell out of this sound. I slipped out upon the glinting blue-eyed earth beneath a starry sky and she laughed. She wept and she laughed at me. Said my life would be like this, cold, hard and outdoors. Which, she said, weeping. She was the first to say it. Later at daybreak, she gave me a proper name. I say it, look. Which? and my breast clouds so the whole word is white rolls out. I have tried not to mind it. I've tried so hard. I have tried to say it does not hurt and smile, and I can reason that which has been a gift in its way for look at my life. Look at the beauty that which has brought me, such pink sky dawns and waterfalls and long grey beaches with the sundering sea and the look what people I met. What people? I've met some sovereign lives. I met wise, giving, spirited lives, which I would not have done without which. What love it showed me too. No which. And I would not have met the man who made me think him, him, him all the time. Him. Who took the strand of hair behind my ear. Him who said you. Alistair. Which did that? So maybe it's been worst all in the end. I wait for my death. I sink him. And wonder how many days I have left to sink it in. I turn my hands over and stare. I feel my bones under my skin and my shins, my little hips. And I wonder what will happen to them when I'm gone. I wonder plenty. Like, who will remember me? Who knows my true name, my full one? For which is what they will shout out as I'm dying? Which, as the dark sky is filled with fiery lights? It is like I have lived many lives. This is what I tell myself, many lives. Four of them. Some folk have only one, one life, and no, two, n no, no other. Which is fine, and maybe it's the best way out of it. But it's not what I was meant for. I was a leaf blown all over. Four lives. Like there are seasons. Which was the best of them? I would lift them all again. For all had their goodnesses. I would like to be back on the cottage by the burn. With cats asleep in the caves. Or to walk in the sick elm wood. Which was dappled. Full of grubs. 
Cora called it a healer's friend, for she found most of her cures in there. It was where I undid my shoulders for the first time, and where the best pheasants were for catching and eating, which sometimes we did. Or I would like to be back in my second life. My second life was like flying. It was empty lands and wind, and mud on my face from the hoofs. I loved that grey mare. My fingers were knotted into her mane as she galloped over miles and miles. Snorting and throwing up earth, I held on, thinking, go, go. But it's my third life I would like again, most of all. My glen one. I lifted too briefly. It was too short a life. Yet it's the best I've known. For where else did I see my reflection? And... I think you are where you should be at last. And where else were the people who did not mind me and let me be? They pressed a cup into my hand and said drink. They left hands by my hood. I thank you and raised a hand in greeting and I had craved that all my lonesome life. All I deeply wanted was love and human friends. To stand in a crowd and think these are my kind, my people. That was my third life. My fourth life was this one, in here. Yes, I'm for places, mostly, but it is because they made me so. The ones who eyed me and did not trust Herb or grey-eyed girl, they made for me for places by hissing witch. They sent me up, up, into the airy parts. But the truth is that I wish I could have been with people more with those Highlanders who never minded filthy hands or tangles or my English voice and who slowed to look at geese flying south like I did. So I'm for places, wind and trees. But I'm for good, kind people most of all, like Alistair, Cora, the chief of that clan who's dead now. I think, too, of Gorm's Hall. I think of how she was the night before the murders. How she put her hand near my cheeks, but not on it. And if she was afraid of touching me, she said there's blood coming. But she said more than that. A man will find you, a man will come to you and see your iron wrists, your small feet. He will write of things, such things. What were those words? I brushed them away. I thought it was Henbane take talking or someone half dead dreaming. I saw Gormsel in the falling snow, shook my head. No, my wrists. I looked down upon them, and so they are pink and flesh, they are fine. It was a herb, surely. Her teeth were green with it, for blood was spilled in Glencoe, like she said. Blood did come. A man will find you. I hear these words now. Who says them? I say them. I say Gormsel words. And I remember how she looked at me. I see the deep liners on her face, which Loss had made, and the scalp beneath her snow-white hair. I wonder if she's also dead. Perhaps she is, but I think she lives on that blustery peak. A man will find you, iron wrists. Some things we know, we hear them, and think, I know. Or like we've always had the knowledge waiting in ourselves. And I know she was right. There was a light in her when she said I am with a white astonishing light, as if she'd never been so sure. Like how a deer is when its life its heads and sees you. When it lifts its head and sees you. And is scared, for it knows you are real and breathing and that you've crouched there all this while. So I wait with my shackles and dirt. I wait, and he comes. A man I've never met is riding to my cell. When I took up in the straw, I stand to the dark and see my other lives. I see the box, the glen, but I also see his face, his spectacles, his need, Buckled shoes and leather case. This is it.
This is chapter one and it strangely ends on page 13. So if you did enjoy that, my cat certainly did. She was always here with me, listening in. So if you enjoyed that and you like that, and you want a little bit more of this story, and you want me to continue, please give me a comment and remember as always, like and subscribe. Bye for now.